Hi guys, so welcome back to another episode of Two Wacky Pundits. Howdy. Dr. D and Dr. A. Today is the Christmas edition. Yeah, we've got the Christmas tree in the back, nice and white. And I'm still wearing red from last week. From last week, eh? I don't know. Well, no, no not <laughs> completely. I washed it first <laughs> and then brought it back. But you're in your fucking pyjama, so you can't complain. All right, yes, true. <laughs> So, uh, so today we thought we'd do something Christmassy related, yeah? Yes. So um, why not? For those who haven't noticed, I'm wearing my Christmas T-shirt as well. Hmm. So, you yeah. re recognize this? No, tell us about. No, it. Nakatomi Plaza. Uh, Nakatomi Plaza. It's the logo of Nakatomi Plaza. And for those of you who aren't movie buffs, where I've been living in another planet lately, hmm. where since 1986. Um, it's from Die Hard. The, it's, it's my favorite and ultimate Christmas movie. It's where the bad guy plummets from, huh? Yeah, but before all that, I mean, uh, the Christmas spirit in that movie is just amazing. Yes. Like having a Christmas party like that. <laughs> it's just phenomenal. So True. Now True. I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <Yeah>. Priceless. <laughs> you PKA, motherfucker. Exactly. So, what up, Bruce? Willis, so it's a, it's a classic. Yeah, <clears throat> you know he's been to Walter. Yes, a couple of times. Uh, many, many, many actors have been. No, to but Walter. no, but this particular one, Willis. Uh, he likes it apparently. Well, he, he married a Maltese English um, lingerie all right. model. All right. all right, all right. Whether he's still with her or not, I do not know. But he did come here to Malta in 2011, 2012, to ask her, the daughter's hand from the mum. Who lives oh, in Rabat. I see. He's a romantic guy. Huh? He's an old style romantic. Well, he's got the cash to fucking come here in private jet, you know, just mm. to do that. So what the fuck? Yeah, why not? And obviously she said yes. So. The mother. Well, you, you, yeah, yeah Margaret Bruce Willis knocking on your Bruce. door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. So, but yeah. Um, anyway, Die Hard for me, it's a, it's a classic. Yes, I mean, for I, me too. I like it. For, for Christmas, Die Hard and Die Hard 2. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, setting aside our love for Bruce Willis, um, we thought we'd, we'd talk a little bit about some movies which are a little bit um, against the grain, so to speak, um, compared to your classic stories of Christmas like Oliver Twist, Scrooge. Compared uh, to the classics. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What else do we have? Miracle on 34th Street. The Grinch. Uh, the Grinch, but the Grinch is a little bit controversial because he's working against Christmas at first, so... And they made him controversial um, recently as well, through yeah. cancel culture. Yeah, yeah. Dr. And there was Seuss. another one, and uh, the classic one was... Uh, oh my God. The Wonderful Christmas, or what is it? Let me see if it's here. What a Wonderful Life? No, 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 one. no, no. It's an old movie, 1960s. Uh, Billy Wilder, yeah. No, no, James Stewart was in it. Oh, fuck, I forgot it. I forgot the actual name. But anyway, it's a, it's a, a true classic. It's like heartwarming thing. Mm, yeah. Uh, but this is not about all that. So here I have an interesting list that I found on Nerdist. I'll put in the link uh, at the bottom of the of the clip. So we have nine movies that I'm going to talk through quickly. I haven't seen most of them, mm -hmm. but a couple of them um, I know about, and I know them by reputation, so to speak. Um, but I do need to check through these, hopefully this week, if I have the time. All right. Because there's, there's some really awesome crackers in here, Christmas crackers from hell. So without further ado, we'll go with the first movie. And this was released in 1984. And it's called Don't Open Till Christmas. <laughs> and uh, so, and you know, the movies in the 70s and 80s, they, all, they always come with a uh, kind of a catchphrase statement, like that summarizes the entire movie, yeah? Mm -hmm. So this catchphrase is the following. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was staring. They were all dead. 
<laughs> it's already really a good start. Uh, so basically, this this movie was it's a British production, and in the lines of the website over here, it tells the wonderfully twisted tale of a killer terrorizing the foggy streets of London. Oh right. And targeting men dressed as Santa Claus. Oh, right. So all the Christmas fathers out there in London were fucked. <laughs> Why this guy running in the streets and killing them all one by one? Uh, so yeah, so it's an interesting, uh, you know, slasher killer movie, Jack the Ripper type of thing. But instead of prostitutes, it's Santa, it's Santa Claus. I was gonna mention Jack the Ripper actually. <laughs> yeah, so so that this, this is one of those movies that I have not seen, but looks interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's a good laugh. Uh, so let's go on to the next one. So this one is a bit earlier. And this was uh, released in 1980. Before I was born. A long time ago, yeah. Now I was still around. I mean, because I'm older than you. Yes. And it's called Christmas Evil. And the catchphrase for this is better watch out, better not cry, or you may die. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the catchphrase. So, and storyline for this. This 1980 cult classic, apparently, has one of the most outrageous conceits behind a slasher ever. The murderous man at the center of the movie was scarred for life, mentally, after finding out that Santa was not real. Oh my God. <laughs> this is beautiful, I mean... Uh, so basically this guy was dedicating his life for making toys for other, uh, for Christmas, you know, the kids that love Christmas. Psychological, eh? And then he, he and basically he snaps after being mocked by his peers and then barks on a festive slaying spree. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it also happens to be John Waters' favorite Christmas movie, so... All right, John Waters, the pervert. Yeah, exactly. That amazing pervert. <clears throat> I actually don't know about him, though. Uh, this John Waters. John Waters in is detail. a... He has like, many movies. Mention a movie that I know, but maybe. It'll ring a bell. Um, I, I don't know them offhand, but I've seen them. One of them? I've seen them, and then they've, they're, they're very, they're very um, disgusting. It can't be worse than Peter Jackson's first movies, like Brain Dead and... No, they're, they're sexual. They're sexual. Okay, all right. Okay. They're sexually perverted. Okay. Well, if it's his favorite movie, then... Yeah. So, next up, we have a 19, ah, 1985 movie. Yeah. Um, Brazil. Brazil. Now, this I remember the trailer. Terry Gilliam, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen it yet. I know about it. I remember oh, yeah. the trailer when I was growing up, watching it on TV, because it was really the marketing for this movie was heavy at the time. Um, but the catchphrase for this is: "It's about flights of fantasy and the nightmare of reality, terrorist bombings and late night shopping, true love and creative plumbing." Creative plumbing. So this is the type of movie which is totally like. Uh, mixed up stuff it's a hodgepodge yeah. yes it's a hodgepodge yes but it's very effective um i showed so it once to people in uh in probably Holland, people would not understand but, or say we're like this guy is fucking crazy they were bored with it really people who don't understand well they were weren't smoking enough joints now people who <laughs> are that then people who are not are not film buffs yeah but they're, probably not they're appreciate Dutch. it oh, right. not, not appreciate it yeah yeah, yeah. Probably, most probably uh, but actually, this, I, I actually need to watch this because... Um, it, I liked it. I, I, I haven't done it justice. Especially the know. ending, eh? Don't the tell me. Don't, don't, don't no, no, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But there are several endings and the film had a long and convoluted career. Yeah. It, it had the director's cut, the regular cut. The regular cut butchered about 30 minutes of the movie, I think. Wow. So if you are going to see it, if you're going to see, see the director's cut. Okay, good to know. So the film is a true antidote to the corporate joy enforcement of your average family-friendly 
holiday flick. True. So basically, it's like giving the finger against um, all the Western f- vanilla type fancy, fancy, perspective happy. of Christmas. Uh-huh. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. So next up, this is a movie that again I know about, but I haven't watched it. Um, <clears throat> it's called again a 1984 production. Don't know what was happening in the mid 80s about Christmas. <laughs> Remember, there was Trading Places that was out as well trading in 1984. Trading Places, Eddie Murphy. That's another and classic. That's my Boy. second best Christmas movie, personally. Oh man, I love that movie. Uh, it's, it's, it's work of art. I, it's I a masterpiece. Love it. I love also. It. Yeah. You cannot go to Christmas in the past, but you know, you have to watch it at every Christmas. Die Hard, Trading Places. Mm. First but watched it in Italian, that movie. Did you? Oh, oh damn. We got the phone. Um, I'll call him later. Sorry, we're doing this live, so this shit happens. What can you do? Um, so, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Basically, and the catchphrase for this is you've made it through Halloween now try and survive Christmas <laughs> and this is another slasher basically uh, the story talks about the terrifying tale of a department store Santa who goes on a killing spree after catching two people getting intimate and having flashbacks to his horrible childhood Oh man! So it is uh, pretty original, well, mm. slasher usual stuff anyway. So that's yeah, that's another one to check out. And then we have um, a very tricky movie. This one. Mm. So this is 1998, a bit further down the line now. And so at first sight, we have a blockbuster type of actor in it, Michael Keaton. Some people might have already noticed where we're going here. In Batman. Um, that was now for the particular it movie. It was Christmassy as well, I think, in Batman. Possibly, possibly. Most of them were. Well, some of Keaton's, them were summer. Michael Keaton's Batman. Some of them were summer, I think. Hmm. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but we're talking about Jack Frost here. Hmm. So, at first sight, we have Michael Keaton and uh, playing the part of a guy who has a son. He didn't really you know have put much care into the son then the uh the father this guy dies and he is reincarnated as a snowman all right and the snowman's job is to make sure that the kid so his son uh will have a great christmas so to speak so spend time with the kid so it sounds like a nice heartwarming movie and all that stuff but um it's actually um you can think of it as chucky all right chucky yeah and snowman version <laughs> <laughs> so apparently there are some really hardcore scenes in it so uh, here it says if you're looking for a secretly sinister movie this christmas jack frost is it and, that, and that's the movie jack frost so basically and the catchphrase for this is Jack Frost is getting a second chance to be the world's coolest dad if he doesn't melt first. All right. <laughs> <This is> classic. <laughs> um, so next up, we have a really, really old movie. Mm. It's a classic. I have not seen it, absolutely. I haven't seen it either. Um, a 1947 production. So, and the, the title of the movie is Lady in the Lake. Um, one thing that makes it interesting for viewing is this, the storyline, the catchphrase for the movie, not suitable for general exhibition. All right, X-rated then. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just, when the movie is it's X-rated, it's, it sounds, it's not it suitable sounds for really, anyone. It sounds really fucked up for 1947, so mm. basically. So this classic Raymond Chandler ad- adaptation is oh, a Raymond surreal right. noirish treat that begins three days prior to Christmas. Its iconic opening credits are scored by a vintage recording of Christmas songs with the credits on Christmas cards. But the last card is removed to reveal a gun. Hmm. 
So, and then saying perfect for those lazy food coma afternoons where you need a festive thriller to get you through. <laughs> so that sounds interesting. Next up is another movie that I know about but I haven't watched yet. Uh, Black Christmas. I think I've seen in this. In 1974. Yeah. Uh, so basically, <laughs> the, the catchphrase for this is, if this movie doesn't make your skin crawl, it's on too tight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it, this is basically a sorority slasher movie. So we have a sorority house being harassed by anonymous phone calls. And, well, you know the drill, then what happens next, you know, the, the killer starts knocking them off one by one. Probably they'll be in various states of nudity and all that shit. I think one of the actresses um, became was famous. Olivia Newton. something. And Olivia some... Newton-John? No, 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 not Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she played the uh, mother of Christ in... Uh, all right. In, uh, Temptation of Christ. No, in... Uh, the other Jesus Christ superstar? No, not even that one. The 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 big the, the big one, the Zeffirelli, Zeffirelli one. Oh, Zeffirelli. Zeffirelli, the, the life do, of the... Christ. Okay, all right. I haven't watched it. All right. I haven't watched it. Okay, but it's interesting to know. Olivia Hershey, I think. Okay, so this is interesting. Next up was a pretty fucked up movie, I think. 1989 Elves. produced um, Elves and the catchphrase is they're not working for Santa anymore <laughs> <laughs> so in essence so okay this sounds interesting uh, so the, these guys nerds they've got some good well they've got some good writers on it so I'm gonna read it quickly we're nearly done anyway ever taught Man, there aren't enough Christmas movies about elves who are accidentally summoned by pagan teens only to bring out the second coming of Hitler. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is one for the books. So, uh, well then, elves is for you. This Z movie. <laughs> Z movie. <laughs> Z movie? Not even X. <laughs> Z movie classic is one of the best and slash worst 1980s oddities, including a lot of really fucked up shirt that should never, <laughs> that should never be on a Christmas movie. <laughs> but if you love bad movies, bad practical effects, and exploitation, Elves is a holiday movie for you. Yeah, oh, sign me up for that one. And now we have one which is, I think, <laughs> after the recent legislation, you should watch it while doing a joint. <laughs> for sure. Because it's a 1979 title movie, and it's called Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Oh, I mean, man. this is like, pff, way out there, man. <laughs> uh, so the catchphrase is, the amazing story of Santa in Big Trouble and his exciting rescue by the daring ice cream bunny. It's breathtaking fun for all. This isn't even <laughs> it was make like, sense. It was like a Pooh Bar <laughs> movie, you know? Um, <laughs> it's based in Florida. <laughs> all right. My favorite state. Um, yeah. So the this, Santa's rules. This magical madness sees Santa stuck on a Florida beach before telepathically connecting with some young people to help him deliver presents with the help of a gorilla, a lion and a dog. Jesus. We still haven't got to see the ice cream bunny yet, so you can imagine. So yeah, this is another very, very, very interesting movie mm -hmm. that needs to be checked out for Christmas time. So if you manage to get access to these movies, um, you please know do. How. You know how. I know I'll be doing some work uh, to try and stream these. Pretty sure they won't be on Netflix. I don't think so. <laughs> so we'll have to find another way. Netflix but, has um, become very woke. Anything that Smith, Smith yeah. thinks of. Netflix. Uh, iconoclasm. 
Uh, it's not gonna make it on Netflix, surely. <clears throat> but anyway, so that's our Christmas movie list from us. Uh, we hope you had a good laugh and enjoyed it. We hope you will check them out. Yes, why not? Because uh, they're a bit, again, as I said from the beginning, against the grain. So I think we'll end this episode today by wishing all of you guys and your families very best for a happy Christmas. Very happy Christmas. And New Year. Okay. We'll see how it goes with COVID, but fingers crossed. We'll go to the upper edge. Um, and having said that, we will return after the holidays. Yeah. So take care, guys. And Merry Christmas once again. May your God be with you. Indeed. Bye.